Well, hello there. We're going to start doing a demo of CAD CAD, just a basic walkthrough of the process. One of the, one of the ways you can approach taking a conceptualized idea for a simulation and then converting it into some, some graphs to start solidifying your idea and then going into uh, code and the configuration. And then we'll see how, how it runs. Um, this code will be publicly available on the, the repo that we have, um, SimCAD repo. And uh, this will, can serve as a basic template for how to use um, CAD CAD in your own projects. So we'll slowly walk through the process here and then go through the configuration files and show the format of how um, CAD CAD is set up. And I also recommend looking at the first robot and marbles tutorial that has some more in-depth write-up of the different components. So what we're taking here is it's basically a three-step process on how we convert our ideas into code. So we first conceptualize the idea which we will just do, that's like whiteboarding, whatever graphical representation of, of your problem. And then we move it into a, a charting system that helps us map into behaviors, mechanisms, and states. Behaviors being um, like, do I decide to, to go eat lunch today? Or do I decide to, to make something at home? Just a behavior, a decision of that aspect. A mechanism would be how I would make that happen. Would I put a food in the microwave or would I go drive my car? Mechanism helps me get to the final state of what I'm, I'm eating and where I'm eating. So we'll then map it into that format and then we move it into the actual configuration files of the SimCAD or the CAD CAD code. So this is the rough example of our first step of the process from the Robots and Mar Marbles example. Um, this could be any way you can imagine on a whiteboard or, or in a lucid chart or any such a other mechanism, whatever makes most sense to you for the conceptual stage. At this point, we're trying to get an idea in your head down to um, some sort of a graphing process that we can then start conceptualizing um, more tangibly. And then you can be showing this in, in presentations and, and things of that nature. So the, the basis of this example is um, we have two boxes, one of them has um, 10 marbles in it, the other has, has none, and the robot's job is to, to move the marbles until it's an equilibrium between the two different boxes. So in this graph, we just have our robot, and it, its process is what we're gonna be the, encoding the logic, and it will be taking marbles from one box and moving them to the other until they're in equilibrium. So we know now conceptually what we're trying to do here. So now we move down to that middle tier of the, three, of the three levels that I was talking about, where we have this is a type of graphing process that we have. Um, it's called, we call this a mechanism graph. One of the names we're using, which you'll have, you'll have exogenous processes, the internal processes, and then you can have like um, policies and things of that nature in these different swim lanes. And then on the left here, we have those behaviors I mentioned. We have the mechanisms and we have the states. So in this case, we don't really have a formal behavior. The robot is just going to be continually moving back and forth. There's not much decision process here. This is not an, uh, an AI-driven robot. This is just a completely rule-based um, 19th century robot. So what we have here is uh, the mechanism is move the arm to one side or to the other. So it's going to be updating box A or updating box B. And then the states are how many marbles are in box A and how many marbles are in box B. We have two states and two mechanisms for this uh, problem. And that you can see how we took our, our generalized whiteboarding example and moving into our conceptual states here. So the, we then, depending on, on the complexity of the project, in this case, this is a very, very simple process. So we don't necessarily have to use this three part here of encoding into, into math. Um, it's kind of an optional uh, three point, I call it 2.5 essentially. Some problems will do this. We're doing some novel work and we're doing some very complex math. Um, writing up the mathematical equations is a good idea. For something like this, it's not necessarily necessary before we move it to, to our code, but in this case, we're using it for illustration. So we have a little algorithm here. We're saying if box A has more marbles than box B, then we're gonna have a negative one. Essentially, we're gonna, gonna take it away. This, uh, we're using uh, this sign right here to donate that. Um, and then here, if box B has more marbles than box A, we're gonna say that we'll have one. So then the end of our, our, our little loop here will be, you add this value negative one or one to A, to box A, and then the mechanism will update accordingly. And then box B, we just reverse this. What we're saying if box B is greater than box A, negative one and one. So it's an exactly inverse function from what we had in box A. So this is how, until we get it not moving at all, we're gonna be moving back and forth between the, the two different boxes until we 
So if we start with 10 marbles in one box and move to five, eventually we'll have five time steps of correcting, then we'll be at, at the homeostasis of five um, marbles in each box. So now that we know the conceptually what we whiteboard and what the problem is that we're doing, we moved it down into the mechanism steps uh, of like graphing the different components. How many mechanisms do we have? How many behaviors do we need to have? How many states to represent our idea here? We can then move it in the code, if you know, into um, mathematical functions if necessary. And then we can move it into our SimCAD, uh, or our, sorry, our CAD-CAD configuration file. So what we have here, I'll just walk through the components here. As this is a very simple example, it's very good for showing the, the outline of the template because you can have this file inside of your Jupyter Notebook. But in this case, um, which is the recommended way when you're building complex things and being able to version control better and things like that, is to actually import this file instead of building it in the Jupyter Notebook. Some of our examples have them built in, which is easier for a one-stop shop documentation. But when you're actually using this in it for your simulations, it would be better if you use a configuration file that is separate just for version controlling and things like that. Because what the whole purpose of, of CAD CAD is to be doing testing and A-B testing and things like that. And you want to have the different versions. If you have the Jupyter Notebook as what you're running things on, it's a lot better to have different configuration files so you can import configuration one, configuration two, or name the name of your, your A-B test you're doing. So essentially what we have here is there's an option for random seeds if you want to be able to have the same run each time. And there's, a, there's three different configurations that you have the possibility of using. Just how many discrete time steps. Um, here we're, we're using 10. Where there's just going to be 10 time steps that we're going to go through. Uh, zero indexed. Then we have the number of simulations. So a, we're going to do a single run of this, but we could have a Monte Carlo run. So you could have 100, 1,000. It will run that many times. And then you'll be able to average them out on the other side to see the, the average of the examples. And then there's a relatively new feature, which is parameter sweep. We would be able to sweep uh, parameters um, of, we don't even have any parameters in this example. Let's say if you're using a gamma or a beta or something like that, and you don't know which, what range of numbers you want them to be between, you can use this uh, function. So there's also a possibility, I've commented out here, but you can have defined, like, what is the time increment? Here we're just saying time is time, and we're not even worrying about that for the sake of example. We can do minutes, we can do seconds, we can do days, things of that nature. But our mechanism here, which is we're skipping behaviors, so we don't have any behaviors, but we have our mechanisms. We always, to be logical, we always just do it in the same template because it's easier to learn and it's easier to remember when you're building your configuration files. And the exam the, this file can be used as the basis of your, um, your templates. So if you look here, this is just a Pythonic representation of this uh, equation that I built out in LaTeX. It's just the exact same thing here. So this is how when we solidified it before we go to the code we had our RDR date idea set up. And then the part B is the same. And then we need to have our, our initial states, our genesis states, which is like what I was talking about. We have one box with 10 marbles, one box with no marbles. And then we call this, we have to, if we have exogenous processes, which we don't in this case, it'd be time would be an example if we were defining time and things like that. And then the mechanisms, this is where, as um, Dr. Zargon likes to call, we wire up the circuit as in traditional engineering which we define like the behaviors and link them to the policies and link them to the states. We basically, this is how we link everything together by what will update what. So the policies in this case is behaviors and we don't have any, so we're leaving this part of the, the dictionary blank. And then we're saying our mechanism is here and our state variable is here. So we're updating our state variable with this mechanism. And then this just appends them all together and this is the fully functioning configuration file. So we slide back to our Jupyter Notebook. We import um, some of the basic CAD CAD functionality. We're importing pandas, we're importing NumPy as well, Matplotlib. Um, and then we're also, what we're doing is right here, we're importing the configuration file. Because this is in the same directory on my computer, you just have to import config and we're importing config and that's how CAD CAD is set up. So you, this is already set up for you. So then um, these are the few ways so we can run it in, in interactive mode. We run the example. And then we can see the results here at for each time step and each sub step. So we start, well, let me just run it here to show you how fast it is. So we're importing the file and here we go. So we start box A and then at the beginning has 10. Um, where there's only one run here. Uh, if I changed it to two runs, you would see two runs. And then um, we're going 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Oh, and at time step five, we hit five. So in box B, we're doing one, two, three, four, five, then we've hit the homeostasis. 
the equilibrium. So here we have box A and box B, the first five time steps they're working and then they hit a solid right here. So now, what would happen if we changed, I have another configuration file here for the sake of example. What would happen if we changed uh, the state? This is the exact same file, except we're changing the states to 11. Um, because as, as you saw, the robot's always going to be using this calculation, say, between um, checking the, the differences between the two boxes. So what happens if we move to 11 states, for, or 11 different marbles on box A? So if we run this configuration file, we see that we go to 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5 because it's an uneven map. So when we plot this, you can see this, this effect here. And this is just a very, very basic example of how CAD-CAD operates, but it, it provides a, an overview of the, some sort of the methodologies we use to approach this, and you can go to extremely uh, complex uh, cryptocurrency token engineering designs uh, for ecosystems. And you can do something as easy as, and simple as this because CAD-CAD allows the functionality to, to basically encode whatever you can come up with. And that's why uh, for ecosystem testing and then you can do individual policies and A-B testing and Monte Carlos, it's a very, very powerful tool. But that's why it's appropriate to approach it in a correct logical way by the, the three steps is what we use, uh, a variation of this is what we use at, at Block Science, and it's very a good way to take when you have complex designs. You could technically have skipped all of these steps except for the code in this example. But for we, in anything, even if it's simple, we still go through these our stepwise process to make sure that you can um, know what is happening and have designed it according to your specifications.